Hello and welcome back to the second video in this series that teaches you how to play Dark Souls. Today I'm going to talk a lot about the stamina bar up in the top left corner and the role that that plays in uh, combat. Um, a couple of things that I want to show you before I actually go and get into a fight are that any action you do, whether that's attacking, whether that's you know rolling, whether that's blocking somebody when you when your shield gets hit, um, that's going to take stamina away, and you need stamina to perform basically any action in the game. You have to have stamina. Stamina is the most important bar in the game, even more so than your health. I think that focusing on your stamina bar is even more important than focusing on health when it comes to like leveling up and stuff like that. Um, the more stamina you have, the better is what I'm trying to say in short. A couple of things that you might want to know before you go into fights is that if you're rolling around and you're attacking and then you put your shield up, look at how slow the stamina bar regenerates. When you're holding the shield out, it regenerates really slowly. Okay, If you're rolling around and you're attacking and then you don't put your shield out, it goes up really fast. So the point I'm trying to make by telling you that is that you never want to have your shield out unless you are absolutely certain you're about to be attacked and you need to you need to block the attack. Otherwise, keep your shield down. I mean, lock onto the guy, you know, back up from him, dodge around him, but don't put that shield out until he is about to attack you and then block and then put it back down again. Otherwise, your stamina is going to regenerate way too slowly and you're going to find yourself in some tight spots. First place you need to go in the game is up this way. Okay, so let's roll around him and then put the shield down. Let the uh, stamina rebuild. All right now, this guy's going to come after me. See, watch what will happen if I roll. And then I keep it out. See how slowly it's regenerating? Then you got to really kind of move around. So the best idea is to just keep your shield down unless you have to have it out. Now, what you just saw was a backstab. I'm going to go kill this guy up here first. Keep your shield out for this guy. He tries to burn you up. What you want to do is get behind guys, stop moving, and then press the attack button. If you're moving and you press the attack button simultaneously, it's really hard to get a backstab that way. Otherwise, if you're just moving like this, you'll just do an attack. But if you get behind, stop moving and attack, boom. You'll get that backstab off. It took me a long time to kind of really understand how that works. Um, just, you know, little kind of seemingly simple things about the controls that can really help you in the long run in some of these fights. So those are two things you really need to keep in mind here at the beginning of the game. Is that you need to do backstabs, and in order to do that, you got to get behind your enemy, squarely behind them. And then uh, make sure that you stop moving and then press the attack button. And that you need to keep your stamina up, so don't shield while you're trying to regain stamina. Now those two items I just picked up are soul items. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Should be down here. Soul of Lost Undead. These will give you uh, experience. They'll give you souls if you, when you use them. Um, it's smart not to use them um, until you are absolutely sure you're going to be leveling up. Because if you die, you lose all your souls. See down in the bottom right corner of the screen? I have 2,624 souls. When I die, all of those souls will be gone. So, But if you die, you don't lose your soul items. So keep your soul items. Use them when you're absolutely certain you're going to be leveling up or spending them to increase your equipment uh, at a blacksmith or something. Otherwise, just hold on to those and don't use them because you could always die and then end up losing your souls. Now, when you do die, you have a chance to go back to the point where you died and pick up your lost souls. Um, but it's never a guarantee that you can get there again without dying because if you die again and you don't pick them up, then they're gone forever. Turn to the left. There's guy, two guys actually waiting for you. Try to get guys to come at you one at a time. Um, the enemies are pretty dumb in this game. And uh, even at this distance, like, he can't see me. He doesn't have a very good draw distance. Uh, you know, his, his sight is very limited. So you have to really get close to him before they'll see you and come after you. Oh, I wasn't squarely behind him. Um, so try to drag them out one by one. This game isn't too bad if you're fighting enemies one-on-one. -on -one. It's when you 
have you know a whole bunch of them surrounding you that there tends to be problems. Let's get this guy to come over to us. There we go. One more hit. Should do it. Okay, wait for the stamina to regenerate. And come around here and fight this guy. Come on. Back set. There you go. So that's how that works. Alright, so once you step through here, there's an item right over here before you head up the stairs, another soul item. Then we head up the stairs to the right. And a dragon will come. Don't worry, it's not going to kill you yet. We will worry about him much later in the game. Right now, we're only going to deal with these guys. Watch out, there are some archers trying to shoot you. Just get your backstabs. Now there's two guys coming after you. Be careful. There's archers shooting you and these two guys at the same time, so that's pretty annoying. Get your backstabs in there. Backstabs are seriously really important to master early on. Okay. Let it rebuild. There you go. Now we're going to go take care of this idiot. I'm going to kill you right now. Man, the frame rate's really effed. I think I just might need a more powerful PC. I might need to upgrade my video card or something to play this. But this is really bad so far. Anyways, open this door, come in here to the left, grab yourself a wooden shield. This will block all physical damage. We don't have to worry about that anymore, so let's equip that in this hand. And there you go. Now you got a shield that'll actually, you know, do some good for you. These guys are a little bit harder to kill. They have shields, so I'll try and drag them out one at a time. Alright, we get him to attack, get behind him, backstab, and I don't think it finishes, does it kill him one? Oh, okay, on first, okay, on New Game Plus it's a little hard to kill those guys. Now these messages on the ground, see, try luring it out, this, these are actually messages from other players that are online. Um, and they will give you hints about how to uh, get past certain parts. Anyways, you kill this guy, and you see all these boxes here, you can actually break through these. There's a path down here, and there's actually a merchant selling some stuff. Let's talk to him. Well, now. All right, weird guy, but you can purchase items from him. Um, I would suggest getting this orange guidance soapstone. This is what allows you to write messages. Um, all this other stuff, and this residence key. Make sure you get this too. How many souls is it? Pick up the residence key. Trust me, just do it for now. We also need this bottomless box. Uh, and we're going to want to get this repair box as well. Still don't quite have enough souls, so I'm going to go kill some dudes and come back. Okay, so as soon as you kill all those dudes, climb up here. And uh, collect the item that's on that corpse. I think it's throwing knives or something, but... Uh, Here's a good hint. So this guy said try jumping off. You can press the select button and give it a rating. Um, every time you give a rating to somebody's comment, it gives them plus one humanity. So I recommend doing it. Give people thumbs up on their comments if they're good because it gives them humanity. Humanity is essential in this game. So run and jump over here. And what this does is it gives you access to this area up here. And you can find yourself nice. Oh, uh, pick it up. Crossbow. So you get a free crossbow by jumping over there. Okay, so here's something I want to show you. Uh, at bonfires, if you choose to rest at bonfires, it's actually going to um, respawn all the enemies you killed previously. So keep that in mind before you uh, before you rest at bonfires. But it'll also replenish your Estus flasks, and it will also um, refill your health and everything like that so but there's a couple things you can do at bonfires you can uh, attune magic which I won't go over today you can level up which I will go over today um, and you can reverse hollowing which I won't do today but I will talk about it a little bit oh and you can also kindle which I'm gonna do right now so let's talk a little bit about humanity what is humanity how does it work humanity is an item just like any other item and you can equip them um, to your fast menu down here with the down 
uh, down on the D-pad. So let's use the humanity real fast. What it does is that number up there in the top left corner just went up. So you have soft humanity, which is humanity that you've used, humanity that you now have up there in the top left corner. And then you have hard humanity, which is the item that's kept in your inventory. Every time you die, you will lose not only all your souls, but all of your soft humanity. Okay? You don't lose your hard humanity, you lose your soft humanity. So same with souls, uh, using soul items. Don't use them, don't use humanity that is, unless you n know you're going to need it really soon. Uh, right now, I'm going to rest at this bonfire, and what you can do is you can kindle the bonfire. What that means is, well, let's just go ahead and, and try it out. Oh, you have, to be, you have to be in human form first. So you can reverse hollowing using one humanity. So let's do that. So when you're in human form, a couple of things will happen. First of all, you will now be open to be um, invaded by another player online. People can invade your game and try to kill you. You can play other against other human characters. Um, but you are also able to kindle bonfires now. So let's go ahead and use my humanity. Sit down and kindle this bonfire. Now what this is going to do is uh, it'll build the bonfire a little bigger but now when you rest at it you'll actually get more Estus. Um, so now look at how much Estus I can use. I can use up to 10 Estus now instead of 5. Usually when bonfires haven't been kindled they will only restore 5 Estus. Uh, and in this case now every time we rest at this bonfire it'll give us 10 Estus which is pretty sweet. And let's find out, it might not be able to do this yet. Later in the game there's an item that you can get where you can Kindle bonfires all the way up to where they give you 20 Estus. It might not let me do that yet. Yeah, we can't go any further without the secret right, which is something we'll get later in the game. So let's talk about um, the bottomless box, which is what we just bought from the uh, the merchant there. And this is where you can store all your stuff, like throwing knives. I don't need this, so I'm just going to put them all into the box. You can only do this at bonfires. Um, can't put any more in there. You can store humanity. Let's go ahead and store the rubbish in there. Um, but yeah, this is a place where you can basically manage your inventory. Here's another combat for tip for you real fast. So if you're selected on a guy, you can actually, um, like when you're locked on like this, you can move to another guy just with the C stick. Uh, not the C stick, the, the, the right stick. With the right stick you can move and toggle in between uh, different enemies like this. So that's something you might want to keep in mind when you're fighting multiple enemies at once and you're, you know, blocking this guy's attack and then you block it and then this guy's about to attack you. You know, you can just switch over to him real fast, block his attack, then come back to this guy, attack him. Then you're about to get attacked again, you switch back to this guy and you're centered on them. So keep that in mind. Okay. Now, I want to talk to you. Still keep it and go ahead. Never hurt. <laughs> Shut up. And I want to buy from you this repair box. This will allow you to repair your equipment at bonfires. Now once you've done all that, you can go ahead and kill this guy. Because his usefulness has now been used up. And you see that you see that uh, that item he's got there, that weapon, that sword? Uh, it's a pretty sweet sword and I want it, so let's kill him and get it. Get humanity every time you kill an NPC. Oh, we got the orange guidance soapstone without having to buy it from him, so that's cool. Pick it up. Pillage the body. And you get this pretty sweet katana, so let's try equipping that. And you can see the different stats. It has a plus 10 to attack from the axe that I'm using, so it's a better weapon than what I have right now. But uh, with my present stats, I'm actually not able to wield it effectively. Um, this is a a sword, a weapon that requires dexterity. So let's head, ooh, I forgot to get, pillage this guy. And I'm gonna be going for a dexterity build with this character, and I recommend it because some of the best weapons require dexterity. So the two things that I would suggest you level up when you're at bonfires, the beginning of the game, oh, we gotta, oh, I'll talk about this later. That's, uh, that's how you summon uh, other people to play with you, other human characters that are online to play with you, but I'll talk about that in another episode. Let's go, and uh, can we repair equipment right now? 
There you go. So I, it requires 28 souls. I guess I can do it. Just click on that and you repair it and uh, boom. And then your armor can also get damaged. If you hit a lot, you can repair that at, uh, at the bonfires. But we want to level up. Now, I actually can't. I have to have 673 souls before I can uh, level up. So I'm going to go get some more souls and then I'll come back and talk about that. So hold up. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, farmed about 6,000 souls, just so I can show this off to you. Now, there's some things you need to keep in mind when you want to use a weapon. For instance, right now, I want to use this weapon. But as, it, as we uh, learned earlier, we actually can't do it with the current stats we have. If you look at my dexterity, over here on the right hand side, I have a 9 in dexterity. So if you want to look at what the requirements are for a weapon, uh, you just go into this menu right here and uh, click on it. Uh, press the A button to enter. Now when you're in here you see X is toggle display. On the PS3 controller that would be square. So you press that and you come into this menu here. Now you see right down here the require parameter. You need to have strength at 14 and dexterity at 14. Right now our strength and dexterity are at 12 and 9 respectively. So we would have to raise both of those stats up in order to use this weapon. Now as a precursor, kind of a precautionary warning to you, I think it's more important to level up your endurance than it is your strength and dexterity. Um, even if you're like a magic, if you're going to come into a, become a magic class of some kind, you want to cast spells, you want to be a sorcerer, uh, even more, more important than intelligence um, is going to be your endurance. Your endurance is what's going to increase both your equip load, so you can see the equip load increases, and your resistance to certain status ailments will increase as well. But uh, it's going to take your, um, your green stamina bar up which is what we really want to do. So I would suggest focusing on endurance first and foremost. Um, but if you want to maybe put a few points into this and then some into dexterity, uh, we can basically get that up to about 14. And since I'm fairly experienced in the game, I'm gonna go ahead and do this and not worry about the endurance right now. But if I were you, if this is your first time playing, I'd focus on endurance first. So let's go ahead and put our souls into those areas. And now we can, uh, dang it, that's not what I want to do. Now we can use this sword, which is sweet. So, a couple more things I want to show you. Dang it. Just wasted that. There we go. A couple more things I want to show you about combat. So now we can kill these guys. Oh, what? He has no way he, oh my god. I thought I could kill him with two hits. One more thing about combat I want to show you. You can press Y or triangle on the PS3 controller and you can uh, wield a weapon in two hands. Now you can still block with it, but mostly what this does is it makes you way stronger. Uh, and with this sword, I really like to dual wield it. You can still block, like I said, but it'll, uh, it won't block 100% of the enemy's uh, attacks. But it makes you way stronger. Way stronger. So it depends on the situation. It depends on who you're fighting. You might want to go two hand and do more damage and kill them quicker. Um, or if they have tons of HP and you want to be more conservative and make sure you can block their attacks, you go this way. But I really like going this way, dodging and getting backstabs and stuff like that. So that's something that you might want to keep in mind. Now, I think that about wraps it up for this episode. Uh, next time, I'll show you guys uh, how to beat the first boss. And uh, if you have any more questions about combat, uh, make sure you leave a comment, uh, and I'll go ahead and talk about that in the next episode if you guys have any more questions. Thanks for watching, and peace!